Hello traders, so welcome to the weekly outline setups volume 180. As you know, in this video, we're going to have a look at the market, how it developed this week, what kind of opportunities we had, and most importantly, try to forecast what could happen in the week ahead. Ilya here tuning in in the Trading Fanatic channel, really happy to see you here. This week was nice, we had uh, some intraday moves, but again, it was really hard to trade. The market overall remained in a consolidation, right? And as I'm just going to explain to you in a bit, we are going to be having a massive economic macro news releases week in the next week, right? It's also the first week of February, so we're going to be having NFP, we have FOMC, we have ECB, we have GBP, we have lots of things to discuss. So we're going to have a busy time. But again, we have two weeks of consolidation. January has been a mess, right? I'm overall losing for the month, but I took a win this week. That kind of brought me a little bit back towards the break even. So I'm going to explore. I'm going to show you the trades that I took. And uh, then we are going to dive deep into the markets. If you're new to this channel, it is all about trading. I share these weekly outlook and setups every Saturday. And once per week, I give my best to share an educational piece of content or a trading setups breakdown video. More is incoming on that. So make sure you're subscribed in order not to miss those videos. Turn on the notification bell. And if you already did, let's head into the video. All right, as always, we're going to get started with the Dixie to build a picture of how the dollar is performing overall. And what we can see immediately is that we're having two very slow, very choppy weeks. And actually, in fact, this week was even choppier than the previous one, right? So what I always love to say is that uh, the market is currently cooking for something and I can immediately tell you what it is. So if you go to my other screen, have a look at what is happening next week. We start Monday with some GDP for, for uh, Germany. Then we have consumer confidence, very important currently. Uh, but that's it, right? So Monday is going to start slow. Then Tuesday, right? So have a look. Red, red, red. GDP, bank lending survey right there. So GDP for the euro. We start from GDP for Germany. So euro is going to be very active. Uh, unemployment rate, GDP, Italy, right? So we have lots of news right there on Tuesday as well, right? But wait for it. We go on to Wednesday. PMI, manufacturing PMI, Fed interest rate decision, monetary report statement, FOMC press conference, right? So this is absolutely crucial. It is expected that we hike the rate by 25 basis points, right? And what is going to be very interesting next week is that we also have a 50 basis points hike by Bank of England and also 50 basis points hike by the ECB, right? So that is going to be very interesting to see how the dynamics are going to go between all the uh, central banks hiking their rates. Of course, the euro should rush. So if they should really hike their uh, rate by 50 because if they do not, then euro is going to go to hell, right? And then, of course, apart from that, we continue, right? Jobless claims, we have press conference from the ECB and the cherry of the cake on Friday is NFP, right? And we have services PMI and an un unemployment rate. So it's absolutely incredible week we have ahead it's going to be very 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 busy it's actually going to be probably very volatile so um it's good to trade right but just watch out around those economic news releases don't trade right because we're going to have wicks we're going to have massive moves it's not worth it and i think after next week is over then we're going to have a very fresh start of february with everything out central banks uh telling us what they want to do hiking the rates right um uh, projecting the uh, the projections right and uh, then from there i think we're gonna start having some clean price action so let's see let's see though if we can potentially forecast something although i'm really not in the mood to forecast because anything can happen next week right so we're just gonna have a look at the technicals as we usually do once again so on the weekly time frame the dixie is currently bearish but again i think it's gonna be next week that we have a look at the monthly right we have been pulling back for a while, right? So the first bearish month was October, November, December, and overall January are four months of a nice pullback, okay? So you can, of course, go ahead and draw a range, and you can see that it's just tapping 50%, okay? So that is very good. So is it time that the Dixie starts to recover? Well, we don't know, okay? So I'm going to drop to the daily, and again, you can see the daily, like currently we're trading in this. So I want you to spot something, right? We had this candle right there on Wednesday, 18th of January. It made a high and it made a low. And this low was taken just this Thursday, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five. And on the sixth day, we just took it out and then we're back into the consolidation. So it's an absolute mess. And again, as I told you, it's a waiting for the Fed. It's waiting for next week. And again, if I just jump on the 40 time frame, well, this is what we have, right? 
So pretty much what we had is we had a break of structure right there. And then pretty much this was our supply. And as you can see, the market has tested it once, two times, three times, four times, right? And uh, it was only on this Thursday that I told you that we actually just wicked a little bit below it, right? And it depends on how you count like the breaks. If it's a wick, right? If you count wicks as breaks, then this is a break. And then to me that this becomes a four hourly uh, shift of structure, right? Then this becomes our four hourly demand zone. And then we take a long from here right targeting the new high which was actually created also on friday so according to me right now to my rules the flowerly time frame is bullish okay and i'm gonna take my major higher low as this one right so make sure to type it out major higher low right and what i'm gonna be looking for maybe on monday if we're gonna be trading is for a tap inside this higher low and then to potentially see a shift on the 50 minute time frame and to catch another long okay but once again, I have very low expectations for next week uh, because we're having all of those news, right? So the market can build up all of this liquidity. So I want you to also watch out for this trend line, right? So we can have like a spike down, a spike up, and then the market will decide where it wants to go. So really don't think that next week is going to be very high probability. So guys, make sure to watch out, right? Don't like start, don't start a challenge. Don't uh, increase your risk or don't do anything stupid because again, January has been so shitty. Don't make like the first week of February go wrong. So then you trade with a wrong mood for February, right? So wait for it to develop. Wait for the market to show you where it wants to go, especially after all of those news releases. And then we're going to strike with confidence and hopefully with some clean price action. I'm not going to be jumping on the 50 minute. It's an absolute mess on Friday, right? It's up, down. Well, there was a long ride there. It's not an absolute mess, right? So we actually had a shift of structure, push, pullback, hard low, hard high, hard low right there, maintained from the demand zone pushed up hard high right and then we return back so it's pretty slow right now so let's see okay this is my forecast on the dixie like in thinking in terms of liquidity i do think we can go and attack like these two wicks right there right because the market for me right now has shifted bullish so if i get an early long opportunity from this zone i will be interested to take it but i do think we can just enter into another consolidation before the news are released so again as i keep telling you watch out next week and make sure to always monitor the news let's have a look at euro usd so similarly to the dixie we're having a very kind of slow week as you can see like the the momentum is getting weaker and weaker so here we push nicely then we pushed a little bit weaker and right now we're also showing a rejection to the upside so again is it time we make some sort of a pullback well we never know right it's been pushing for quite a while without any significant bearish candle right and of course, you know that overall on the monthly time frame, we're bearish. Like what I did with the Dixie is draw like a big range. And as you can see, both the Dixie and your USD are tapping precisely on the monthly 50%, which is a pretty important area of value, like just the, the 50% alone. I'm not going to be looking on the left and like trying to drop like something like this, for example. That is definitely possible. We just don't know where the market is going to stop and if it's actually going to come in and test that zone. So I'm immediately going to go to the daily time frame. Which again, you can see has been in an overall uptrend, right? We started Monday, like pushed up, rejected, then pulled back, then up, then down, like so. There were some movements, but not great, right? Very, very, very hard to trade. And pretty much, yeah, the daily is currently bullish. I would say that the higher low on the daily is here. So daily is still bullish. But then again, dropping to my main time frame, which is the quality time frame, right? Also pretty hard to trade. But of course, overall, if you know how to follow recent structure, right and have precise rules for uh, for mo your market structure there was when the market reversed long right and it has been long since then right so pushed broke structure pullback higher low formation took a while to push but then went on broke structure again then this becomes our higher low formation right comes in and then starts to chop around but again at the end of the day we came in we took the high and it was then actually that we aligned bearish and turned into a bearish market I took a short from here, as I'm going to show you. And uh, then we continue to push on. And this is the last break of structure right there. And if we zoom in to spot where is our last lower high, according to me, this is the major high, lower high. Sorry, we can mark it like this. And then as for the supply zone, supply zone is a bit tricky right there because this is like the last buy. But then we had another buy right there and then we sold off. Right. But this to me is not a valid range. So I'm not going to explain why. For me, this has to break in order to, to actually shift bullish on, on the flowerly time frame, right? So again, similarly to the Dixie, uh, currently the, the structure on the flowerly for me is bearish. So if we 
pull back anywhere inside. Again, we have to maybe look at a... Yeah, probably... Probably I'm gonna take uh, this little guy right there. Something like this. Like a little bit like that, right? And then utilize this week as liquidity. So that could be a potential setup that we can um, engage with, right? Pull back right there, align bearish, and then potentially go short. So if I am to call a setup, this will be the setup that I'm calling, but I'm also aware that the market is still overall in this kind of bullish sentiment, right? The daily is still bullish. We can come in, also take out this low as liquidity, and then also continue going higher. So once again, uh, even on Monday for the euro, we're starting up some with some massive news. So watch out and trade carefully. Right? Don't try to forecast too much what's going to happen because you just don't know. Right? And anybody who tells you he does, yeah, he doesn't. So if I drop to the 15 minute time frame, yeah, right now we had, um, yeah, what sucked on EU, I was looking to actually short from here as well, uh, but the market actually wicked above it and then did a continuation. So you maybe could have re entered if you trade after liquidity graphs, but to me, this is not a liquidity graph, this is uh, actually uh, a break of structure, right? And to me, like, how do I know that this is a liquidity graph? Well, I know after it took, takes out the low, right? Because oftentimes, if you're trying to trade, like, away from liquidity graphs, like, say you have this, right? And you're like, oh, this is a liquidity graph. I'm going to take a short. Well, oftentimes, the market just keeps doing this. Oh, this is another liquidity graph. I'm going to take a short. And then you just trade against the trend. Well, for me, this is a trend change. So I start looking for, for longs, right? So again, this is EU, very plain, very simple. I am not looking for anything. I think I'm going to take it very conservatively next week to really actually focus on uh, monitoring what the macroeconomics are saying because we have a very important week. We're going to be hosting a major session on Monday within my community that we're going to have a look at everything, right? We start every Monday with a macro fundamental analysis review, right? Combining it with some price action. So let's see what's going to happen, okay? And just to quickly show you... Uh, I took a little swing trade this week. It was absolutely not tradable on the one minute this week on, on your USD. So I didn't take any trades. No your USD, no US 30 as well. Uh, but uh, I took this one right there, which was uh, usually not a trade that I'm taking, but I kind of got tired. And, and usually what I spotted is that, again, the market is all about adaptation, right? So if you trade it from uh, simply swing trading, like trading not on the one minute, but just staying on the 15 minute, you would have made a lot more R than trying to catch trades on the one minute. Like for example, here we had an alignment right there and I was looking to long the market right there. It did not provide a setup, but if you took it with eight pips, there is your setup. The market then pushed it pull back, back into the zone, right? I was looking for a one minute setup. It did not provide a one minute setup, right? But it provided the setup like this. Right, so you see, you actually make profit. You make hours when you're staying on the hard time frame. So then on Thursday, I was like, well, I'm not gonna force it too much. I'm just gonna enter. We took out the the major high on the left. We immediately had a reaction. Right, we had a trend change on the 15 minute, which means that potentially a new hourly higher high is formed, and we can start initiating the pullback. So on the retest, I just took it, and I was actually monitoring the the one minute. And on my uh, on my IC Markets live account, uh, there was actually a little bit of a trickery right there because to me, I'm, I look at liquidity graphs, I look at very specific things to occur before I take my entry. And there was a difference between Forex.com and IC Markets. So I wanted to enter from the middle of the zone, but I took my trade from here just to ensure that I actually get triggered, right? But I did not place my stop loss right there because again, uh, the liquidity hasn't been grabbed yet on this broker right there. So I took it like this, right? And then uh, suffered a little bit of drawdown, but then it aligned bearish. So then I had an order right here for five pips. It was like this, but unfortunately it came very close. So I would have made some pretty, pretty, pretty good profit on this one, but still I'm pretty happy with a very nice three R trade, right? So 10 pip uh, stop loss, three R, 30 pips target. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Actually went on uh, very nicely down. If I held it would have been, would have been good, but I just took three R. I'm very happy because this brought back uh, three of my losses, right? So I think I'm finishing total with two losses for, for this month, which is which is fine, right? So guys, this is my only trade on <laughs> for this week, uh, but I'm, I'm not very happy with it because again, it's not really into my plan. But again, uh, what I learned this week is that you also have to adapt to the current conditions. If the one minute is just not providing, then just enlarge your stop loss a little bit, get involved, take a two hour, take a three hour, just get paid. Right. So you make a little bit of progress, not just staying on the one minute looking for your entries. So, yeah, 
this is your usd let's see how it goes next week i'm very 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 excited for february so stay tuned right stay tuned for tuesday as well but i'm gonna be traveling on tuesday so probably the live session is gonna be on wednesday i'm gonna send you a reminder for that let's have a look at euro yen so you're gonna see that the yen pairs together with the usds they overall consolidated this week again making it pretty 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 hard to trade so again this one still to remind you we are still staying within this higher low formation on the weekly right it came very close to breaking it maybe if we go to another broker it's probably even broken it right and we kind of been rejecting around it and overall what you can see is that we're having an overall consolidation so if i just transfer in the daily there it is right so this is actually the major daily lower high as we have been repeating for quite a while right now the market pulled back into it tried to push make a new daily low it could not and right now it's returning to test that level again but usually if this potential lower high fails to make a new lower low then it becomes weak and it usually should break right so what i suspect to happen is this right and then from there we're going to evaluate to see whether we're going to continue going up or are we going to again align down and continue going down right so i can pretty much forecast this high could get taken if there are really not a lot of sellers entering from this zone okay but again overall as you can see we started monday with a push and then it was four days of choppiness right very 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 hard to trade so if i just zoom in on the 40 time frame again i'm gonna remind you that still this is our major lower high this is the major lower low right and everything inside is internal so there is no breakdown there is no breakup all of it is internal right but when you have price action like this then it, you you have to look at the internal right so if you just zoom in there was a break of structure here what caused the break it's this right well actually yeah it was this but then the market pulls back and breaks structure again right there then it breaks structure down what caused the break of structure down this right the market pulls back retests it and right now it's potentially headed towards making a new lower low but again remember this is internal structure right and again to me it just doesn't make sense right we're tapping in like in, inside this guy right there on the left and this guy is tapping in, inside this guy on the left but this guy failed to, to cause anything to the downside so it's technically liquidity so that one could be a very nice kind of a um, little trend line right there we can be looking to, to be taken out so on EJ, I don't, I, I'm just not going to throw any forecasts on this one because I'm um, completely honest, I don't know what's going to happen and I just don't have an analysis on this one, right? If you just want like to trade very recent market structure and momentum, there it is, right? It's bearish, the market broke down, pull back, lower high formation, but it's already uh, pushing towards the new lower low. So currently, this is not a good positioning to be entering into a short. Okay, of course, what you can be doing is, is dropping to the 50 minute and trying to follow it. But if I also jump on the 50 minute, right, it's, it's not the best. Like, how do you trade this? Right, how pushing right there, then how do you trade this? Right, it stays in a range for quite uh, the, the whole London session. Then, yeah, US session makes a push up. But then how do you trade this right there up and down? I don't know, right? So technically, I am not going to be throwing any bias probably. This week, I'm not throwing any biases, right? Just saying what I think is going to happen in terms of the quality time frame. But that's EJ, right? So don't force it, right? Don't look to forecast something. Just wait for it, right? Next week is going to be huge. The JPY is going to be impacted like indirectly from the euro, from the USD, from the GBP. So again, watch out for it, okay? But if you want my view, then I think right now this one is short-term bearish. So if you want to take something, maybe this is going to break. Then you have to look for a new lower high formation and continue trading it down. But as I keep saying, don't do anything stupid. Interestingly, the Aussie has been rather bullish this week. As you can see from the weekly candle, we're having a very nice push up. And actually, if you remember, guys, I've been looking at this zone for quite a while. But I always told you, don't look on the left. Right, don't look at the left. Maybe draw it, expect a reaction from there, but those levels on the left always break. Why? Well, because we follow the recent momentum. This is the current sentiment, right? This level happened in August 2022. So do you think it's going to be relevant for what is happening right now? Not really, right? Um, this is why I always love, so if you have a recent structure like this, right? So this is, again, the weekly, we have a push, we have a pullback, that's perfect, right? But then this one pulls so far away, and then pretty much we're having a whole half an what is it yeah well it's not half a year but 100 days which is pretty much uh three months of pushing up so do you think like just a level like this is gonna reverse the market not really right so again focus on what is happening right now 
dropping on the daily, you can see very nice daily structure as well. Like this was the daily higher low formation. Perfect retest. Last Thursday, Friday gave a reaction. Then just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, bullish days, right? And Friday, just a little consolidation. So if you traded something, it should be the Aussie. Um, I think my community took quite some TPs on the Aussie this week. There were also some stop losses early week. But then I think Thursday and Friday offered some... Um, not, not Friday. I think these two days right there offered some good opportunities. So overall profitable for the team on Aussie this week. Again, Flowerly push. This is where we broke higher low formation, higher high formation right there. And right now we're just chopping around. So according to me, this one is still bullish. We're still uh, trading inside this range from the low to the high. Uh, this week, this wick, I mean, this candle, it's very... I don't count these because this candle took out the high and took out the low. So I just ignored it as indecision, right? And I still maintain in the overall range. But again, if I'm going to be drawing a range, I'm going to draw it like this, right? So right now we're tapping into 50% and just consolidating at the top. So I am i don't think right now it's a good time to be trading the Aussie. Why? Because it's at a very strong weekly higher high. It took out that massive weekly liquidity on the left. It's at a higher high, so we can be expecting any reaction anytime soon. And we also have very major news next week. Okay, so be careful, but this is how I currently look at it, right? This is uh, pretty much a, a daily structure break. This is the four recent structure break. So as long as it goes up, then we follow it, right? But yeah, you can see precisely right now, not, not the greatest, right? There were some good intraday opportunities um, around like after the Asian station formed. Uh, but yes, so so this is pretty much the Aussie. Again, as I said this week, I'm not throwing biases. So pretty much this is our recent structure. Let's see what happens. Uh, and also JPY, you can see, also rather bullish right now, a very nice bullish candle is printed, um, even though this one is the JPY pair that is actually going down, that is actually bearish, and then of course we can take this little supply zone that we're tapping inside right now, going to the daily, Monday, actually since Friday, push up, up, and nicely kind of uh, rolling into this supply zone on the left, taking the liquidity on the left as well, so again, is it going to go short, is it going to break this level we don't know right we don't know so what we do know is we follow recent structure there is a breakup right there there is a higher low formation beautifully retested beautiful long from here right there is another break where is the higher low right there right so let's wait for it to pull back right here and to potentially take another long okay um yeah, we're in supply, but as I always keep saying, right, don't look on the left. Like, this zone already came in. The market came and responded, came and responded, 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 right? So I do think the orders should have been taken already. And you can see that the market just continues making bullish structure. So I do think this one can definitely go, right? But let's not again try to forecast too much. What is happening right now? We are bullish. So if the market comes in inside this demand zone, I'm going to be looking for longs right with a 50 minute alignment and of course all the um my entry criteria to be fulfilled so that's also jpy that's also also usd both of them look bullish let's see what next week is gonna do the nzds on the other hand did not have the strength of the aussies right but as you can see the nzds are actually a couple of weeks ahead right so the aussie just broke this supply this week the aussie broke it like uh quite a, five weeks ago right and actually made a new higher low and already made a new weekly higher high right so the nzd is already way ahead right and it's currently staying at a weekly higher, higher high formation this is potentially the weekly higher low right so we're definitely bullish on the weekly and then dropping on the daily the daily is rather sloppy right there you can see a very big consolidation then we start expanding um yeah, it's actually pretty pretty tough to to determine okay what is my major high low formation on the daily right this is when like the the confusion comes in between the different time frames so again what i always do in order not to get confused is i immediately go to the 40 time frame and ask okay what is happening right now and what is happening right now is this very 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 nice but again if you just track it a little bit on the left this is the last push right where does this push originate from well where is the lowest point? Yeah, there it is. So this is the overall range that the market pushed outside of and caused the hourly structure break. The market pulled back all the way down, didn't break it, right? And technically, currently, it's bullish on the 4H and it should be breaking above this high, but it did not, right? So why didn't it break? So this Monday we opened, 
right and we tried once we tried two times we failed and we just consolidated purely this week pure consolidation on nzdusd this week right just pure consolidation so what can i say well nothing again technically it should be taking out this high right in order to create a new 40 hour high because right now this according to me this is the major 40 hour low right so the forward is going to be bullish until we stay above this zone right so what i would really love to see is to have a break above so that break above is going to give us a new higher low formation let's say that is going to be here and then if the market decides to reverse down it's going to be much simpler to wait for this one to break rather than wait for this one to break right there to say that the market is bearish so this is something that I expect on the NZD. I'm not saying that it's going to go down. Again, we just don't know what's going to happen next week. But I do project this high to break, right? I see that the accumulation is happening right now. So we're definitely going to be having a, like a textbook manipulation. So shake down, shake up, and then potentially the market goes in the direction, okay? So watch out for this one. And again, don't trade it. Like, why would you trade this one? How are you going to trade this one? So again, NZDs, the Aussies look way better, right? Going also to NJ, I'm just not gonna analyze this pair because again, this one is still is it's still staying below this low, right there, and it still hasn't broken below this low. So what is this consolidation, right? You have you have resistance and you have support, right? I don't trade support and resistance, but they just look like it. You can say that's supply and demand, whatever. It's just not tradable to me, right? spiked up then tried to push down failed again so if this high failed to cause a new low then it, it becomes liquidity it took it out this high failed to cause anything it becomes liquidity we took it out right so and currently yeah it's currently nothing right so well it actually is something if i really zoom into it because the okay i'm getting confused right now do we actually have a reversal yes we have so what happens right here is that as we broke this structure up, we asked the question, okay, what actually caused the break? It's this low. It, this is not a pullback, it's this low. But then if you really zoom in and you take Wix's breaks, the market came in, made a new structure break right there, and then aligned bearish right here with this candle, which immediately gives you a short from here, right? It gives you a short from there. Then we have uh, a new structure break right there. No, this is not valid actually because it's not a valid pullback. Yeah, so we're still stringing it in this range. And then we again pull back into that same zone that was formed by this candle. So as you can see, we are actually short term bearish on NJ. And this is my structure. This is my range. Okay. So again, if you want some sort of an analysis, there it is. <laughs> we are bearish, a very short term. Like I really had to dig deep into this one. I couldn't spot it in the beginning, uh, but there is my analysis on NJ, so I'm short biased, but again, I just feel like this is going to blast through the roof. Because again, if this one is going to go down, if it was going to go down, it should have gotten down way to on the left, right? And it tried to go down quite a couple of occasions, so I don't think this is going to be the occasion to go down. And I do think where our 85 is 85.0, it's definitely get, getting wrecked next week. So let's see, right? But this is how I currently view the structure. Like, you should be short from here, but I wouldn't really recommend to do anything on Monday Open. So again, stay patient, wait for clear setups, wait for the news to be over. Looking at USDJPY, the DXY of the JPY pairs, it's also pretty much chopping right now. So as you can see, we're in an overall downtrend. Uh, then we have this candle, and right now we're having an inside bar candle. So an overall consolidative week for USDJPY, uh, opening the daily time from again, Monday bullish, four days of choppiness let's not forget to acknowledge that the daily is currently bearish and this is our supply zone but again similarly to the dixie this one has been in a massive uptrend for quite a while and probably next week we're gonna have a monthly analysis because the monthly candle is gonna close but if you just take this one right almost 50 percent. so depends on how you draw it like if you maybe even take it from here if you take it from there if you take it from there right it really depends this is why again training is very subjective um, it could be about to be ending the pullback. So is it possible that we start a new uptrend? Well, again, we don't know. So let's not try to forecast way too much ahead in time. Currently, the daily is bearish and the quality is a uh, consolidation. So if you remember, we had a uh, yeah an overall reversal from here. This was a break. This is a breakdown. This is a breakup. Push, pulls back, higher low, higher high. Then we break here, which creates a new lower low. This left us with a supply zone like this right so technically we're still trading within this range right there push down everything here is internal and as you can see we pretty much did not do anything 
So again, the question is, is this going to maintain and push down? This is like the situation on NJ, right? We're currently down, but is it going to go down? Well, probably not. I do think we can take out this high and then potentially see something from here, right? I'm not calling shorts. I'm also not calling long. So USDJPY, let's just wait for next week. Let's see what happens, right? So let me know, guys, did you trade UJ this week? I don't think so. I really don't see any probably some very short-term intraday trades right for it to take maybe like a follow a, a trend like this is pretty much what i do on a daily basis like try to catch like one of these so see the intraday momentum and then try to catch one of these trades for example right there so let me know if you had some good trades or some bad ones on uj uh, but yes i'm not throwing any forecast for now just patiently waiting for next week and then i do think next week's sa saturday analysis is going to be huge because we're going to have a monthly analysis we're going to have all the price action after the news and then we're going to host a pretty 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 good session USD cat an overall bearish week we're having and let's not forget what my overall forecast is right this is our weekly like then we had a pullback below 50 percent but then this push failed to cause a new high and usually when this happens this becomes a uh, liquidity in order for us to tap inside a strong demand zone so i do think this is what is potentially happening right now the market is traveling towards this this zone and about to be taking this low as liquidity dropping onto the daily the daily is also bearish, so we had a break structure up right there, then we had a break structure down. This is lower high, lower low, lower high with this week. And then we had like a little lower high, lower low, then we aligned bullish for a while. Uh, yeah, actually this one was a bullish alignment right here, and then we had like a, an overall demand zone. The market came in, responded for quite a couple of days, right? Yeah, pretty much a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then on Thursday we broke it. And then Friday, yeah, just chat for a bit so if i just jump on the folly time frame the fall is probably um bearish right now yes so what we had actually the major high low is this guy and this guy got broken immediately right, so we broke down here and uh then yeah the, then it's this right so how do you trade this i don't know like to me then it takes out the low right there then it takes out a high and then it immediately takes out the low so currently the folly time frame is bearish right and we just broke a structure down there which makes my major high low lower high sorry this one right i am not loving it though it's very compressed it's it's very corrective right uh but as, as, of course if we get some clean push and clean like exit outside of this range and then we have like a new nicer lower high then i'm gonna be interested to to short this market but yeah i am short bias this is my major lower high so i'm technically bearish right now on the foh so if the market pulls back into this zone that i have right there and gives me any sort of a short opportunity on the 50 minute and then on the one minute then i'm gonna be engaging into shorts if i'm trading the pair okay so that's my outlook very simple very nice again as i keep saying this week i'm not throwing any biases because we have a huge news week and probably what happens on monday what i say that is going to happen right now monday is going to be completely different right uh so let's not try to marry the analysis too much and um yeah so that's you cat let's see what's going to happen we also have i think cat news or no we had cat news this week i think uh, if I just take you on my other screen, yeah, Canadian interest rate 4.5% on the 25th of January. So did they actually hike it? Yeah, they hiked it by 25 basis points. Okay, so that's very important for CAT, right? Uh, which pretty much technically should be should be bullish, but we can see that the market is overall kind of withdrawing to the downside. And the interest rate itself did not have a... Yeah, there is the interest rate. This is the interest rate candle, right? Down, up, and then overall continuing down in the overall downtrend. Okay, so again, detaching from any outcome, let's see what happens, and then hopefully we get some cleaner price action next week. Let's have a look at the pound pairs. So again, similar to all the other pairs, we're having an overall indecisive week. We went down, then we went up, then we closed as indecision. What is important to note is that we just came in and took out this weekly high by very, very, very little. So this is probably why we had a reaction, right? So we took it out on Monday, yeah, we took it out on Monday and then we had pretty much two bearish days and then the market tries to push up and fails, forming an overall kind of a consolidation, right? So then dropping onto the Fowley time frame, I do think there was one very good opportunity to, to, be, to take on, on GU and that's it's this one. So after taking out the, the major liquidity on the left, aligns bearish on the Fowley time frame and pulls back into Fowley supply, right? And then massive drop to the downside. So... Pretty much, if you took this trade this week, you're golden, right? Push down, pulls back. 
this is a lower high, but it fails to, to make a new low. So what happens is, is it um, becomes liquidity. So then we have to see, is it going to hold from here? Unfortunately, it did not. So this to me then becomes a four hourly structure break. And currently to me, this is the range of GU. It is bullish. We pull back to 50%, try to push, failed. And then actually already went on and took out the low. Not yet. Okay, so what is my demand zone? I'm going to take it like this, right? So again, if this was a normal week going on next week, I'm just going to say perfect. I'm looking for this low to get taken, tap inside this zone, alignment on lower time frame, and then targeting a new high. Okay, and I'm actually going to leave it here. But again, I say don't throw any biases right now. We're having a huge week ahead of, in terms of news, so anything could happen. But again, this is how GU looks like. We had a little short-term kind of ABC reversal, and right now we could start rolling into the upside. Um, do we have, the, yeah, we have also, again, keep in mind, just to take you on my other screen, if you didn't watch the Dixie, uh, where is it? Uh, Thursday, February 2nd, look at that, right? So watch out for that. We're going to be having a 50 uh, basis points hike on the pound. So that could definitely be very bullish. So again, short term price action shows us bullishness. So if the rate hike is successful, then I do think we can start expanding. This is what makes sense logically. Right. But again, what the market is going to do is a completely other topic. Right. So jumping on to GJ, uh, this one is also rather kind of bullish. Again, let's keep in mind we are still bullish on the weekly tapping inside this. So this is the push. This is the pullback. We had a bullish engulfing last week and this week. Um, yeah, an overall doji indecision. So daily time frame. Let's not forget that we still have this zone right there. So what is this zone? This is the major daily lower high. That caused this break, the market pullback, try to push fails, then this becomes liquidity, takes it out, and right now we're chopping inside this zone, right? And again, if I just really zoom in on the folly time frame, we can potentially spot some opportunities. There is a break of the high. The market did not provide any long because it just blasted through the, the floor. There is the shift down, then it pulls back, but didn't pull back enough potentially for a short. So immediately went on and caused the new structure break. That is very similar to uh, GU. A, B, C correction, then it broke up right there. Uh, unlike GU, this one at least gave a little reaction from there. So maybe for you to take a quick one to three, one to two, right? Then it reverses higher. What caused the reversal higher? It's this guy. And then we came in and already printed a bullish candle from here. So if you ask me, I'm bullish on this pair, right? If I ignore what is happening on the left and just look at four hourly time frame like this, this is how I look at it, right? Uh, supply was flipped to demand, the market pulled back in demand, bullish and in candles, so you should already be like going on the 50 minute time frame, and there is your long. All right, so that's a beautiful long, a little bit late on Friday, but again, if you again just trade the 50 minute time frame, take it from there, stop loss below, boom, there is your four hour trade, right? So let's see, let's see how it works out next week, and uh, again, I'm bullish on this one. GU also looks bullish, and overall, like the vibe is going towards a um. Yeah, bullishness next week, like the Aussie is bullish, Euro USD is a little bit 50-50, but again, looking at the pound, uh, it looks bullish with the rate hike incoming. Let's see how it plays out. Let's have a look at GOAT. Uh, very nice bullishness in the couple of recent weeks, right now tapping into something on the left, but as I keep telling you, this zone is from April 2022. Uh, we had a similar example on Aussie dollar right so if you want go back to watch aussie dollar right we have a very nice downturn right there but this is recent price action currently the sentiment is bullish so if you just have a, a level on the left that does not mean anything right it can give you a reaction but then it usually blasts through the roof right on gold we have an overall two kind of consolidative weeks right now um I have a couple of members of my community trading gold right now and actually backtesting it gathering data how it works with our strategy and actually works great so i actually added it to my to my watch list, right? I have EURUSD, US30, and gold is actually in here as well. So I'm going to be trading more of gold probably. Uh, but first, I want to start trading US30, get into the vibe, and then potentially we can expand into gold as well. Daily time frame, overall bullishness, right? So very nice. But then the four hourly time frame was the one that was very good, right? Hard high, hard low formation right there. Hard high again, and then it pulls back with the swig to create a hard low tries to push fails but then it just pulls back right there usually i would have expected here to take out this low but it did not went on made a new hard high so pretty much our outlook i believe on tuesday played out made a new high what caused the high this guy but then this guy immediately got broken right there so what is the current um, structure on gold is that we have a breakdown 
and then pretty much this is the supply that i would like to take but there is one right there as well right so watch out for that but again it's always very important to ask what is my major structure in this case it's this guy right and uh it really depends actually if i just watch carefully it really depends if this we consider a break but such candles i don't consider breaks because they break and then immediately break back in right then i don't like them so i will if i have one more candle down then i will count then this is my major lower high but not right now so if we have like any pullback towards these zones i will be looking for a short right but again keep in mind the recent sentiment is bullish next week we have lots of news so i do think right now gold will be about to probably uh, distribute a little bit accumulate uh, maybe manipulate deep inside this zone they maybe give us a a bearish reaction but again don't try to marry something don't try to marry your bias but let me know what you guys think in terms of all the news that are incoming next week we have lots of usd news we have lots of uh, euro news as well how is this gonna affect goat right do you think goat is gonna continue climbing making like going all the way towards 2k or do you think we are going to be initiating an overall kind of a weekly pullback i do think the chance of having a weekly pullback is very high because if the dixie starts having also a kind of a push up then gold is going to respond okay so let's see again not mirroring anything currently we're kind of very short term bearish in terms of the quality time frame so if you have any short opportunities from here then i'm going to be curious to engage let me know what you think guys about gold in the comments all right let's have a look at the indices so bullish week overall a lot of optimism in the stock market right now which is uh very interesting and i do think we're gonna be getting a, a drop anytime soon but again who knows right daily time from us 30 if, if you remember again aligned bearish right there this is our supply zone the market came in massively responded and right now it's just pulling back like towards retesting this zone there is a high chance that it comes in to take out this high as liquidity and then give us the drop right so this is kind of my macro outlook on uh, us 30 very plain very simple in terms of intraday trades this week um we did not have many like because we trade on 50 minute and one minute time frame um not very good right not very good i even didn't do uh, end of day markups because it was not very clean like for example here on uh, monday the range was this, the market just chopped inside, then we broke down, then we reversed up. And then, yeah, on Tuesday, it broke down here. And then again, we were trading in a range, then some trades down, then all of those news. It was not tradable. So definitely, US started not tradable for us this week. The question is, what happens next next week, right? Currently, the quality time frame is bullish, broke up, broke up here, broke down for a little bit, right? Then broke up again. And uh, currently, yeah, this is also kind of a break but with this candle it makes it a bit hard so i'm gonna take this as a demand zone okay so short term bullish um if it comes here and gives a long then that's fine we can we can take a long but it can also start reversing anytime soon because again this zone could hold as well right so very uncertain going forward for us 30 so i'm again not gonna call any outlooks because again interest rates are again affecting the stock market as well so we can be seeing some uh, some interesting stuff going forward OK, uh, like uh, indices market, futures market, they have been chopping around for a little bit. January also hasn't been great. So I do think February is going to be great, though. Right. So, again, my main question goes, is US 30 going to continue long towards this high or are we going to start seeing reversals from here? Well, if you have a break below and the market then forms a new lower high and then it starts to drop, then that's perfect. Right. But if it comes in right there, respects and gives a long, then, of course, we can expect that it could potentially go and take out this high. So let's see. This is my outlook on US 30. And as I keep saying, I don't throw any biases this week because anything could happen. Forecast on, on uh, S&P and NASDAQ is playing out. I was expecting this high to take to be taken. There it is. It got taken. So that is very, very, very nice because we're having a major liquidity grab right now. And again, pretty optimistic so far. And yeah, so quality time frame. I don't think it was very tradable as well on the quality like made push down then i told you it's either going to respond from here or it's going to take out from this high went on took out the high so again there is nothing to forecast right now so we have this structure right there this is our demand zone so again if you want to see a reversal you gotta wait for this one to break you gotta wait for a lower high and then for a short okay daily time frame is uh technically bullish like daily time frame on nasdaq like has been bullish since here push bullish right it's been overall bullish right now which is not a good thing but it could potentially right now start to to align maybe make a little bit more 
And one more pullback, one more break, then bearish alignment will be very good to start seeing that also the daily is shifting down. Because currently to me, you can either take this as a daily higher low or this, right? And it, until this one breaks, we are going to have a lot of time, right? But who knows, maybe it could even break with just one day. So let's see. That's that's Nasdaq, uh, still bullish, but again, just very curious to see what is going to happen within these regions. And also S&P, very nice to see that it also took out this high, as expected. So right now the question comes in, right? Is it going to hold from this overall zone, right? This is going to hold and drop from now, or is it going to continue pushing higher? Okay, we don't know. Daily, uh, sorry, 4 hourly time frame is, is also still bullish. This is our last higher low formation. So if it pulls back right there and reacts, that's fine. But I would expect it to break and hopefully start to align bearish. But once again, I'm not calling anything right now. I'm just observing and waiting for next week. What I really want to point out is the fear and greed index pushing into greed 69, right? If you have a look at the timeline as well, um, 62 we flushed, right? 67, 68 we flushed, uh, 66 and here we came in 70 we flushed and right now we're again 69 about to be jumping even around like uh, if we have one more bullish spike we can come in like at around even 75 which has, hasn't been a level that has been retested in a very long time, right? Uh, when, when you look at the moving average, it looks like it has broken it up, retested from the other side, and already looks like a, an uptrend, like already looks like a reversal signal. So is it possible that we're actually uh, bullish right now on, 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 on the stock market and on the indices and that we're just going to have like a pullback right now to retest another time, the 125 and continue going higher? Or are we expecting another, another crash and even to make new major lows? Again, we don't know. So keep investing i don't think right now i i had a couple of investments um before the the the, um, uh, the earnings right because we're having lots of earnings right now and this is why we're having this recent optimism but is this gonna sustain we don't know okay so i would actually love to see another drop to the downside and i don't think we have seen i don't, I don't think we experienced any pain with, with this kind of crash uh, like we had yeah sure worst market worst market not really top 35 and we have been kind of bullish so far so if we have one more lower though then i think that's when things are gonna change so let's see and i actually hope this one happens uh crypto didn't do much this week like if we really zoom in on the daily it started to chop right now at the top right i think we made a, a recent hourly break but no so th this is why like i don't like crypto like it just chops for for a for a very long time and then it just starts expanding expanding well, but you can see like it chops, 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 impulse, chops, 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 chops. Right now it can impulse again. I'm, I'm not trading it right now. I'm just very curious uh, what actually is causing this push. And is it a real reversal or is it just like um, short term uh, taking out like some buy side liquidity, stopping out some sellers, um, giving a little bit of optimism for the buyers and then potentially to continue dropping lower towards like 14K, right? Let's see. Let's see. In terms of weekly time frame, we're having a reversal though on Bitcoin. Because there is the break. What caused the break? This is the lower high. It broke. But on Ethereum, it's a different story. This is still the major lower high. So in Ethereum, I really do think we are about to be breaking 800. And then from there, we can start seeing the real the real response. This is when I, I will actually start physically uh, buying some, some cryptos as well. Right? right now, like this short-term push we have in the short-term push here. We have a short-term push here. It looks like a reversal, but not really. The market ends up going down at the end of the day. So... Let me know, you guys, if, you, if you're trading crypto. I think I asked uh, recently on another video. Nobody said yes. So I guess you're not really trading it. But let's see. Very interesting week for the um, uh, indices. And as it is for the dollar as well, like for Euro USD, because everything looks a little bit choppy right now. So it's going to be next week that is going to unlock the momentum. It's going to give us the overall um, picture, right? The projections as well from central banks. And then from there, we're going to start striking with full power in February. So... This is how I'm going to wrap it up. Hopefully you love the analysis. Let me know if you did in the comments. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe. Turn on the notifications because I'm going to be posting some educational content in February. And uh, yes, looking forward to see what is going to happen this week. I wish you an incredible week ahead. Stay safe, right? Watch out for all the news. Trade safe and see you on my live session probably on Wednesday.